everyone. Hello, hello. <laughs> My dance shoes and I are ready, Clarissa Khan says. I'm, I'm super excited that you are prepared to get jiggy with it, as the, as the kids say these days. That's what the kids are saying these days, right? People still say that? Getting jiggy with it? I think so. Um, I might be old, <laughs> but I can still design, and that is what I am here to do for you today. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be your host and instructor for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge this morning. Um, I'm very excited and also sad because uh, I I'm really pumped to be here to do another challenge, but this is our second to last challenge before my round of DCCs is over. We have today and tomorrow, and then I will be passing the torch to another designer. Um, no, they don't say getting jiggy with it. I don't know. Maybe, maybe, I don't know, Jose. I feel like I've seen, I, I've heard many a young spry lad say getting jiggy with it. So that's what I'm going to say. No, 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 no. Yeah, see, Sam knows. Sam, Sam is a very young spry young gentleman. And if he says getting jiggy with it and knows the song, then I know that I'm pretty cool. So, don't make me cry. <laughs> I see so many familiar faces in the chat. Jose, Emmanuel, uh, Clever, Valder, my friends, uh, Carlos, Sam Peterson, Antonios. It's so good to have you folks in with me um, today. And I'm going to go over real quick how you can join me for this challenge before I dive into what I actually have planned. Um, and then we can get this show on the road. So uh, if you guys head over to behance.net slash Photoshop, it will take you to the landing page uh, where you can see uh, like a little step-by-step -step of how to get started. Uh, if you scroll down here, you'll see that every day we kind of um, uh, unlock a new challenge for you at about 8 a.m. Pacific time. So you have um, about an hour before I kind of jump into the challenge to really dig into it and see if, you know, how it's going to go for you. Um, a lot of people, though, prefer to kind of wait for the video to begin so they can uh, watch kind of uh, how I go about it. But sometimes people actually attempt the challenge before I teach the challenge, which is always really fun to see how people interpret the instructions and the starter files I create before they see me use them. Um, so that's pretty cool. Uh, but we've done uh, challenges on layers, color, filters, brushes, liquify. We did an animation challenge, uh, textures, and today we are going to make an icon, which I'm very excited about. So um, today it says design an icon using the line tool and shape tool. Try offsetting your lines to add depth. With well, I'm very excited to kind of show you what we're going to be doing. Um, you can click that get started button uh, on the icons challenge to download the starter file that I'm going to begin with today. Uh, and you can also come back and hit that watch video button if you need to review this challenge, uh, because maybe you get a little lost or get stuck on something, need to re-review uh, the video. Or if you know you're not going to be able to stay for the whole broadcast today, uh, you can always come back and finish up the video. Um, and they will be archived there um, on the challenge page on YouTube and over here on Behance um, underneath the video player. You'll be able to see where all of our stuff is uh, organized and categorized um, by theme and program for uh, your easy access. Uh, so um, before I jump into the challenge, I also want to highlight some of you folks in the Discord. I was so impressed with your entries and I have to, I have to like very specifically um, give a shout out to Ellen Rose. I don't know if you're in chat, Ellen Rose, um, but I am so impressed. So yesterday what we did was we took um, some basic shapes and we applied textures and used the brush tool to try and make them look like realistic objects. This is not an image of a CD. I thought that she posted like a stock photo of a CD, but no, she. this is actually an image that she made using basic shapes, like the, the elliptical shape tool. Um, and she added uh, shine and color and everything to this and made a CD and it's so good. I'm so impressed. So very well done, uh, Ellen Rose. I'm, I'm so pleased. Um, and so many people made some super cool things. This is from, um, Avihu uh, Bashari. Uh, this is really, really cool. Um, adding this awesome texture to this camera. It just looks super neat. Um, 
everyone has done such a spectacular job kind of creating these pots. A lot of people did what I did yesterday, and that is combine two different challenges. Um, and they look at the little snail. I love him. <laughs> um, they made their flower pot, uh, and then they also combined it with the animation challenge from before. So they made their sprout coming up out of the pot. Um, and it looks super, super good. A lot of people have done these challenges, and I am so impressed. Look at that. Who's this from? This is from Tristan. Made himself a, a little fence and then put that fence into a, a real scene and it looks like a real fence. That is amazing. Um, so very well done to everyone who participated. Um, I'm very impressed with your work and I cannot wait to see what you do for this one. Look at this. Not only did um, James actually... Uh, take his flower pot and combine it with his growing sprout. He also added a window and the, the clouds are moving in the background. And then this little bumblebee comes in and it's so good. You guys really knocked it out of the park. This is adorable. Sig uh, made this super cute little doggy uh, that munches his food down. Um, Emmanuel, this is awesome. This is like a, a, a lamp that he fashioned out of shapes and then applied a texture to and it looks like a lamp with metal texture, with like a brassy metal uh, on it. So you guys have just really impressed me. Um, uh, Taji Merriman uh, add this really wonderful um, texture, kind of mosaic texture to his flower pot. And it just, you guys just really did a good job. Um, I hadn't seen this one, applied gold texture to my chicken. And honestly, this is the best application of gold texture to any item. I've ever seen. <laughs> um, it's, it's, it's right up there um, with the, with the hooster. Uh, somebody combined a horse and a rooster yesterday, and that was fabulous. So um, this is this is definitely hooster caliber design. I commend you. Um, thank you again, Voodoo Val. This is from Farah. This is wonderful. Thank you so much for the for the thank you and for the beautiful work. Um, but you guys have done such a good job. Very impressed, and I cannot wait to jump into today's challenge and see what you folks create with me. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm gonna page down here, and uh, this is my starter file that I've supplied to you. And it says, again, design an icon using the line tool and shape tool, try offsetting your lines to add depth. Now I've created like a little potion shape because we do have like a loose farming RPG kind of theme going with these challenges. Um, and one of the things I like to do when I play farming RPG video games is use my crops and the things I grow on my farm to make magical items like potions and things, but you folks can create whatever item you want for this. Um, I have given you, like I said, basic shapes and things that you can use, um, but I'm going to show you how I made these shapes, and then I'm going to show you how I um, use not only lines um, and stroke and things, but also how I use the dissolve brush to add uh, some nice texture and depth to this. Um, icon. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna hide this for now. I'm also gonna group my text together um, with G, and I'm gonna hide that, and I'm gonna hide these starter shapes because I do want to show you how I made this shape to begin with. So first of all, I'm gonna select kind of a grayish color. I'm gonna come over here. Um, you can see I've got a little ellipse tool right here. You can either select it from your toolbar or press U on your keyboard. And I'm gonna drag out a circle. Um, I want this to be a perfect circle. So I'm going to hold shift and it'll snap it to a perfect circle. Um, you can actually hold shift and the space bar and the space bar will allow you to not only keep that perfect circle shape, but it will allow you to drag it around your canvas so that you can position it wherever you like. And I'm gonna go like that. I'm gonna make sure there's no stroke on it just yet. Um, and I am going to um, leave the gray shape on there. Um, and then I'm going to right click my ellipse uh, tool here and I'm going to grab a rounded rectangle tool uh, and I'm going to make another shape on here. Uh, just drag that out. Um, and then I'm going to control T to free transform that. And what I'd like to do is center this, maybe bring the sides in um, a little bit like so. Uh, and position this properly. I'm even going to come back to my ellipse and make sure that it was centered, which it was. Perfect. I'm going to maybe drag this down a little bit, drag this rounded rectangle down a little bit, um, and that is looking good to me. Um, I am going to add one more rounded rectangle, like so, 
And I'm gonna free transform that with Control T as well. And I'm going to drag that down to where I want it. I might even bring these edges in just a little bit. Um, and I basically created my little uh, potion shape here. Um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select all of these layers that I've just made um, by, I, I have my topmost layer selected. I'm gonna hold shift and click that bottom most layer that I want to select. I'm gonna group it. I'm gonna right click that group uh, and I'm gonna say convert to smart object. So now it is all one smart object, but if I want to, I can re-click this like I showed you folks yesterday uh, and I can say convert to layers and it'll go right back to the layers that I began with. Um, so I have this smart object now um, and what I'm going to do actually um, is, uh, you know, I may need to rasterize in order to do this, but I'm gonna see if I can do it without. I'm gonna select a portion of this like so um, and I'm going to say control J. There we go. Um, and so what I did was I just, if I hide that bottom there, what I did was I just duplicated, um, a portion of that because I want to make it look like this bottle is full of liquid. So I'm going to rehide that. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to double click my layer that I just made. Uh, and I'm going to add a couple color overlay and I'm going to make this like a reddish potion. Boom. Uh, and I'm gonna maybe make it like that color. I'm gonna make sure that my blending mode is set to normal because I want it to have that full color. Uh, and I'm gonna say, okay, just like so. Um, and there I go, there I have my, my little um, uh, red version of uh, liquid in there. And then I'm gonna control uh, T to free transform and I'm gonna bump that in a little bit. I'm holding alt on my keyboard while I drag in from the corners because I want uh, to keep the aspect ratio um, and have it come in from all sides instead of just shrinking it uh, from the left or from the right because um, I want it to stay on the uh, center line of my canvas. I don't wanna alter that. So I brought that in, you notice I bumped it up a little bit. So now there's like a little a uh, lip, I guess you might say, um, around the edge here. Um, and then what I'm gonna do is I am going to, you can do this, uh, you can do the next part um, a lot of different ways. You can either um, duplicate this shape that you have here with the, um, the, the potion bottle, and you can make this bottom one a darker color. We could just select it hit control U for hue and saturation, bring the lightness down and then free transform it. And I'm gonna just use my um, my arrows to bump it around um, and add depth that way. Um, or what you can do um, is you can add a stroke and then I'll show you how I go through and um, make this look a little more in depth without um, having to make a brand new layer. So. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to hide this darker layer I've made. I'm going to double click that potion bottle, add a stroke. We're going to grab, I'm going to sample this gray color and then I'm going to move it down. So it's a little darker. Boom. Um, and then I'm going to increase. All right, you should be able to hear me now. All right, um, whenever my, my my computer literally just crashed in the middle of this uh, of this stream, I'm so sorry. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna go like extra like Silver Surfer speed mode here, and I'm gonna finish this challenge. We can do this. Can you? Do you guys believe in me? I think we can do this. So um, Photoshop is awesome and recovered my file, so I do have part of what I was working on here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and go back. I'm gonna grab my rectangle tool. I'm gonna drag this out. 
um, and I'm going to start positioning this how we had things. Boom. I'm going to group these and I'm going to convert that to a smart object. If I can convert to smart object and I'm actually going to make a new layer and I'm going to make my little cap to my potion on a different layer entirely. Uh, and I'm going to change the color of this. Boom. There we go. All right. We got that down. I'm going to come over here with my selection tool and I'm going to make my little selection again and duplicate that. Uh, I'm going to turn that to a red real quick color overlay, grab red, boom. There's our red, say, okay, control T. I'm going to make that small. Like we had it bump that up the way that we want it. Um, and now we are back to where we were. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a stroke. Uh, like we wanted to with this. Uh, double click that layer. Um, I'm adding a stroke. I'm going to make that kind of a dark gray color like we talked about. I'm going to make that size up just a little bit um, just to add a little bit more depth to this. Um, and then I'm also going to add um, a bit of a stroke to the top of my my cap here. So I'm going to add a, a, add a stroke. I'm also going to add a color overlay because I think I would like uh, for this to um, be just a slightly different color um, than the rest of it. So now I have a little um, potion here and I've got like maybe four minutes to complete this. So the next step is we have all of these different shapes isolated um, here. And what I'm going to do is I am going to have added my, uh, my lines and everything and made it kind of cool. So everything is very, um, uh, uh, separated and you can see this is like a little uh, potion icon uh, but I want to focus today on using also the um, the dissolve brush because the dissolve brush is really awesome um, and I'm gonna say control shift in to make a new layer I'm gonna right click this make it a clipping mask uh, I'm gonna hit B on my keyboard and right click so I can select a new brush and grab that soft round I'm making my brush larger with the bracket keys. Uh, I'm going to select this color in here and get a slightly lighter gray, turn my blending mode uh, to dissolve, and I'm just going to start clicking in here. And you'll notice that it gives me this really nice kind of noise texture that I really like. Um, and if you zoom in super close, you'll notice, and we actually had one of our hosts or guests um, earlier this week discuss the uh, dissolve brush. The dissolve um, blending mode is really, really cool because it's not like the regular soft round brush where it puts like a gradient. Um, into your file. If you look really close, you can see these are all very highly specific, perfect pixels at 100% opacity. And it kind of simulates with that dissolve effect, like there is a gradient when there isn't, and it gives a nice kind of noise texture. So I am going to come in here with some darker color too, and I'm just going to start kind of um, clicking around and adding some really nice depth to our, uh, our file here. To our little icon. I'm even going to make a blending mode um, over the top of our inner potion here. So I'm going to make a new layer above that. I'm going to right click it, uh, convert to clipping mask. I'm going to hold alt to select that red color and grab a brighter red color. And I'm going to do the same thing here if I can. You know what? This is actually um, colored with a uh, color overlay. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm going to right click that layer and I'm going to rasterize it um, so that it actually is red instead of gray with a red um, overlay. So that when I come in here and I do all of this coloring, it actually shows up properly. I'm gonna grab kind of a brighter color or a darker color. Make sure this is set to dissolve, by the way, so you get that nice effect. Um, and I'm just gonna start clicking around here and adding a little bit more depth to the bottom of my icon like so. I think that looks pretty good. Maybe even darker so that it's really obvious um, how this is going here. Maybe like that. Yeah, I like that. Um, let me grab a much brighter red and do that right at the top here and get that going. Um, and then I'm going to do the same thing to my uh, rounded rectangle up here. I'm going to go convert to clipping mask. Um, I'm going to select the color I have get something that's a little bit darker, make sure my brush is set or my blending mode is set to dissolve. 
um, and I am going to, actually this one also um, is got a color overlay, so I'm gonna rasterize um, this one as well, so that works how I like. Um, and then I'm going to start kind of adding um, a nice color to that as well. Um, and you can see as you go through here, um, you can add like a really nice kind of depth texture to this, kind of in a similar way that we added depth yesterday, um, but not quite so realistic. This is kind of like an interesting way to add texture to something that's not really supposed to look like a true object, but it's supposed to convey the idea um, of an object. And you can even come in here, if I make a new layer on top of everything, I could grab some white and make my brush really small, make sure it's also set to dissolve. Um, and I can add maybe a little shine here to my uh, to my bottle, which I think looks actually pretty darn cool. Um, yeah, I love that. I love I love how the dissolve brush makes it look like really noisy. Um, and you can get like a really cool kind of 3D effect here with doing like very little effort, um, actually. Uh, so that's how I did that. Um, I'm sorry about the technical difficulties that we had during the stream today. Hopefully I still got the challenge um, conveyed and the, uh, the point across. Uh, I can't wait to see what you folks create uh, in the Discord. Um, so please definitely head over there um, and submit your entries after you finish your challenge so that I can take a look at them. And I will see you folks later today for the design off with me and Cody Bear um, yet again, and then tomorrow morning for the final uh, Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge of this round of challenges. So thank you guys so much for joining me. It's been a blast, and I will see you later on. Adios, everyone.